All right, folks, let's continue with our discussion of section 4.1, rational functions, um, introduction to rational functions. And I just want to comment briefly on one thing from uh, right at the end of the previous video. Uh, back in this last example here, number three, it said sketch the graph of h of x from example 1c. So a sketch of a graph is basically a, um, a graph that shows you the general characteristics of the function. It's not exact. For example, I show this hole here at, it looks like it's at 1 comma 1. Well, that's not very accurate because this really, really looks like it's at more like 1 comma 1 half. And uh, there go the dogs again. All right, folks, I apologize for that. It's really, really tough to make high-quality award-winning videos when your uh, dogs continue to interrupt you. Um, but that's what you get paid. That's what you get uh, get with a home studio here. Uh, anyway, uh, back to this graph. So it looks like that hole is actually at 1, comma 1 half. Remember, your calculator won't show you the hole. It shows you a continuous graph there, but you have to look at the table to see that there's actually a hole there because that's undefined when the input is 1. Anyway, uh, my sketch doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to show the general shape of the function. So I have uh, this general shape here and then this general shape here. I show it approaching the asymptotes correctly and I show the general location of the hole. That's what we need to see in a sketch. All right, let's move on. Uh, this uh, start of page two here, we're asked, uh, the title here is Determining Vertical Asymptotes and Holes. Based on your analysis of the graph from a, of h of x, complete the statements below. So we'll go back here and take a look at what we did in h of x. We had 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. And when we factored the numerator and denominator, I, I noticed that we had a pair of factors cancel here. And that happened to be the location of the hole at x equals 1. So if a factor in the denominator of a rational function cancels with a factor in the numerator, then the factor 0 will be the location of a hole in the graph of the function. Alright, so what about this other case here? If a factor in the denominator of a rational function does not cancel with a factor in the numerator, then the factor 0 will be the location of a... Let's take a look. Uh, here we had x plus 1 didn't cancel with anything. And if we go back and take a look at the graph, the 0 of that is negative 1. That was the location of our vertical asymptote. So that factors 0 will be the location of a vertical asymptote in the graph of the function. Okay. So let's work a little bit with holes and vertical asymptotes. Uh, example 4 here says, find the vertical asymptotes and or holes in the graphs of the rational functions below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly factor all of these, and we're going to talk about, uh, I'm, I'm going to factor them, and then we're going to talk about the consequences of that. All right, so we've got our uh, both numerator and denominator of uh, this rational function factored. And the first thing I notice is that I got a factor of x minus 3 that cancels in both the numerator and the denominator. Uh, so what does that tell us? Well, anytime we have a factor that cancels, according to the work we did above, that means we have a hole. So we're going to have a hole at x equals 3. Uh, but there's more to it than that. WebAssign is going to ask you for the location of the hole, and it's going to ask you for both the x and the y coordinates. So this is just the x coordinate. To find the y coordinate, what we have to do is we have to substitute x equals 3 back into the remaining function. So for the y coordinate of the hole, it's going to be 3 plus 2 divided by 3 plus 3 and that's 5 over 6. So what I can really say is that I have a hole at 3 comma 5 6. So that is how you need to do this problem for WebAssign. And um, I've added this little segment here, this little discussion about the Y coordinate because students in the past really were confused by that. Uh, it wasn't enough for me to just say, hey, you take that X value of 3 and you plug it back into the simplified function. Uh, so I want to make sure you see an example of that. Okay, so we found the hole. That's great. We also have to find the location of any vertical asymptotes. Well, vertical asymptotes occur with the factor 
uh, in the denominator that doesn't cancel. Uh, so that happens right here with this factor of x plus 3. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at the line x equals negative 3. That vertical line will be our asymptote. So we got vertical asymptote and the hole. We are ready to move on to uh, example B. Let's go ahead and factor it. All right, so uh, numerator is the same as in our previous function. So this is going to factor into x minus 3 and the quantity x plus 2. Uh, but what about x squared plus 9? Um, this is one I, I, I kind of encourage you to think often about the graph of the function. So if you were to graph the function x squared plus 9, would it uh, cross the x-axis? The answer to that is no. Uh, so we don't, it's, it's not factorable over the real numbers. So this one is not factorable over the reals. And, and I add that little piece about being over the reals because from uh, the last chapter, we learned how to factor uh, quadratics over the complex numbers. But when we're talking about behavior of graphs, uh, that doesn't come into play. Okay, so um, we have to look at our denominator. Our denominator of this rational function is just x squared plus 9. Uh, that can never equal 0. So this graph has no holes and no vertical asymptotes. Okay, let's move on to part C. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and quickly factor this one for you, and then we'll discuss. All right, that was quick. We're done factoring that guy. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have. Uh, I have a pair of x plus 2s that cancel right there, um, but I have another x plus 2. Uh, these two x plus 2s in the denominator both have zeros at x equals negative 2. So I have a factor of x equals uh, a factor with a zero of x equals negative two that did not cancel in the denominator and one that did. So my question is x equal negative two. Is that a vertical asymptote or a hole? Which is it, folks? What do you think? Well, it cannot be both. And I will tell you this: that every time vertical asymptote trumps whole. So what we have in this graph is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. There is no hole in this graph. Okay, so um, that's, that's a tricky one because we had the same factor show up two different ways. Uh, one canceled, one did not. You have to know that when that occurs uh, you'll have a vertical asymptote at that x value, not a hole. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this uh, next piece is about determining horizontal asymptotes. And there is a, a way to do that analytically, just by analyzing the function. You won't even need to graph it. Okay, so it says determining if a rational function has a horizontal asymptote and determining the equation of the asymptote relies on finding the leading term and the leading coefficient for both the numerator and the denominator. So that's all we're going to do is we're going to add, analyze leading term, leading coefficient in both the numerator and the denominator. And we've got three different cases here. Uh, case number one, if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the no denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is just y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Uh, so if I have uh, a quadratic in the numerator and a quadratic in the denominator, the ratio of those leading coefficients is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So that's one case. Uh, second case, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is just the x-axis, y equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. And what I'd like to quickly do, uh, because I've got a little, little time in this video here, is I'd like to show you some examples of that on the graphing calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our Inspire here. And the first one was uh, a de the degree in both the numerator and denominator are equal. So let's just go ahead and pick a simple one here, like uh, let's do x squared plus 1. And let's do 
x squared minus 1 in my denominator. So based on this, the degree in the numerator and denominator are the same. So the ratio of the leading coefficients, 1 half, 1 over 2, that should be the equation of my horizontal asymptote. Hey, take a look at that. y equals 1 half. Looks like right there is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. All right, the second case was when the degree of the denominator was larger than the degree of the numerator. So let's see what happens if I change this. Let's go ahead and change the degree of my numerator. So now that it's less than the degree of the denominator, uh, based on the notes, the horizontal asymptote should go to zero. Oh, there it is. Look, we are approaching uh, the x-axis both in the positive direction and the negative direction. Yeah, it dips below here a little bit, but it looks like it's approaching it as we go towards negative infinity. All right, the last case uh, was one where the degree of the numerator was larger than the degree of the denominator. So let's go back and put our x squared there again. And now let's get rid of the square in the denominator. Grip it and rip it. Yeah, sure enough, uh, there is no horizontal asymptote um, in this graph. There's some kind of uh, behavior here that looks kind of like diagonal. Uh, perhaps we'll learn about that uh, in the near future. All right, back to the notes. Uh, uh, question 5 here says find the horizontal asymptotes in the graphs of the functions below. Confirm results on your graphing calculator. Well, I've already shown you a couple on the graphing calculator, a couple simple examples, so I'll let you do that on your own. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and take a look at each of these. So I have a first degree polynomial here. And in my denominator, I have a second degree polynomial. So the degree of my numerator is less than the degree of my denominator. That means I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And you might want to note that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. All right, moving on to part B. Uh, the, the numerator is a second degree polynomial. The denominator is a first degree polynomial, so my numerator has a larger degree than my denominator, so there is no horizontal asymptote. It's not applicable. So in this one, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Last but not least, we've got this uh, crazy function here, 6x cubed minus 3x plus 1, all over 5 minus 2x cubed. Uh, be careful, folks. Uh, the leading term of the denominator is not 5. It's negative 2x cubed. It's just kind of written in non-standard form. And then I have the leading term. Hold on a second, folks. We just, there we go. Uh, leading term of my numerator is uh, 6x cubed. So I have a cubic in my numerator and I have a cubic in my denominator and when those two degrees are equal the ratio of the leading coefficients is my horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote here will be the ratio of 6 to negative 2 which is y equals negative 3. So that's the equation of my horizontal asymptote. Folks, I, I'm not going to write it like that because that you might get in some bad habits there. I'm actually going to write it like this. When I ask you for the equation of a line, you better write it as an equation. This one is y equals negative 3. I didn't want to lose sight of the fact that it was y equals a number. All right, so uh, let's, let's move on and see uh, something else here. The last thing we'll talk about is something called a slant asymptote. Okay, so this is strange. Never heard of this before. Slant asymptote. Uh, the... Example here says check the graph of x squared minus 4 over x plus 1 to see one. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, we're going to look at x squared minus 4 over, and of course I can't remember it, short-term memory loss, uh, x squared minus 4 over x plus 1. So I'm going to add x plus 1 in my denominator here, x plus 1. Oh, hey, look, this thing... Uh, let me zoom out here a little bit. It looks like this graph kind of does what the last one did. It has has this 
uh, I guess slant behavior. Maybe that's what the term slant asymptote means. It's not a horizontal asymptote. It's not a vertical asymptote. It's a slant asymptote. In fact, some textbooks will actually call it an oblique asymptote. So I'm going to say right here, this is also known as an oblique one, oblique asymptote. Okay. So now we've seen one of those in a graph. We've actually seen a couple. Let's talk about how you find the equation of that asymptote. The line y equals mx plus b, where the slope is not equal to zero, is the slant asymptote of a rational function y equals f of x if, as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, the function approaches the linear equation. So I have, again, in my graph here, this looks awfully linear, this relationship here. And as x goes towards positive infinity and negative infinity, the blue graph is approaching some linear um, equation there. The graph is some linear equation. Okay, so for a rational function, if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, then the graph has a slant asymptote. It turns out uh, that that's what we see here. We had a degree here of 2 and a degree in our denominator of 1. So the numerator has a degree exactly one more than the denominator. That's what produces a slant asymptote. To find the equation of the slant asymptote, it's really easy. You just take a look at the rational function and you actually do a polynomial long division. And whatever the quotient is, that's your slant asymptote. That's the equation of the slant asymptote. So let's take a look uh, in this example, see if we can find the slant asymptote. Uh, so we have x plus 7. And I'm going to go ahead, because this is a, a linear term in my denominator, I'm going to use uh, polyno or synthetic division. Uh, that has a 0 of negative 7. And then I'm going to just copy my coefficients down here. I got the 1x squared, the 3x, and then the negative 4. So synthetic division should go through this pretty quickly. Let's see, that's going to be uh, negative 7. Uh, 3 minus 7, that's negative 4. Negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. And negative 4 plus 28 is uh, 24. Okay, folks, uh, don't be alarmed. This right here, this is our remainder. And we started by dividing a second degree by a first degree. So our quotient is a linear term. So our quotient here is just x minus 4. Okay. Now, I know from the last chapter you're concerned, oh my god, there's a, there's a remainder. What do I do? I can't, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to have a remainder. Well, I don't care about the remainder. All I care about is finding the equation of the slant asymptote. In this case, all I do is find that quotient, and this is the equation of my slant asymptote. So let's go ahead and take a look at this graphically uh, to see if it works out. So I'm going to jump back over here to my Inspire. Let's just start a new document here. We're not going to save that stuff. And let's graph the original uh, one we had there, which was... For this example, it was x squared plus 3x minus 4 divided by x plus 7. We grip and rip it, and there's the graph for our function. Uh, I'm going to zoom way out because there's probably more. Oh, look at that. There is more detail that I was missing. Okay, so there's, there's my graph. Uh, and according to the work we did, our quotient was y equals um, x minus 4. And I'm telling you that that's the equation of the slant asymptote. So let's just graph x minus 4. And right now I am really hoping that x minus 4 approximates this behavior of the graph. Hey, it sure does. Look, look at that, folks. Uh, there's your slant asymptote for the rational function x squared plus 3x minus 4, all divided by x plus 7. Folks, hope you learned something in this lesson. whole lot of stuff going on now that we're taking one polynomial and dividing it by another. We can see some crazy things happen in the graphs. And uh, a couple more analysis tools we need to be successful in this chapter. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, please uh, stay tuned for more in the future.